With SRN News, I'm Keith Peters in Washington. At a press briefing in San Diego today, Attorney General Jeff Sessions says the Justice Department will begin prosecuting every person who illegally crosses into the U.S. along the southwest border. The Department of Homeland Security is now referring 100 percent of illegal southwest border crossings to the Department of Justice for prosecution. And the Department of Justice will take up these cases. Session says the American people support President Trump's campaign promise to secure the border. They are right to want a safe, secure border and a government that knows who is here and who isn't. Donald Trump ran for office on that idea. I believe that this is a big reason why he won. He says regarding families, the parents will be held in custody while their children may be released to the U.S. Health and Human Services Department. President Trump says he's ready to announce his decision on whether to keep the U.S. in the Iranian nuclear deal. The president's self-imposed deadline for making the decision is Saturday, but tweets he'll announce it tomorrow. He's been signaling he'll pull out of an agreement he says is one of the worst ever negotiated, unless it's revised. European leaders who also signed on to the deal with Tehran are strongly pushing him not to withdraw, saying they are open to working on a side agreement, but that the nuclear deal's existing framework must not be touched. Sagar Megani at the White House. First Lady Melania Trump announced a new public awareness campaign that she says will promote values to children. Let us teach our children the difference between right and wrong and encourage them to be best in their individual paths in life. The First Lady's Be Best campaign will also address cyberbullying as well as opioid abuse. On Wall Street, the Dow by 95 points, the Nasdaq rose 56, the S&P advanced 9. This is SRN News. One evangelical leader says Christians are not too political. They're just responding to politicians, government officials, and the courts. When they foray into our territory, we have to humbly and courageously stand up and speak out. Pastor Michael Anthony is founder of GodFactor.com. All of the biblical characters, when, when they stood up, spoke out about an issue, they did it with humility and with courage. And that's what needs to happen in our nation. With America drifting from its Christian foundations, Anthony says this is no time for believers to be silent. Franklin Graham appreciates the way that people want to honor his father, but he says Billy would have rejected most of it. Some have started working in, to place a statue of him in the Capitol, while others are petitioning for a Billy Graham holiday. Franklin says, my father would have said, this is too much Billy Graham, he wouldn't have liked it. Franklin reveals that there was even discussion at one time about taking Billy's name off the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. This is SRN News. The U.S. Department of Transportation is again urging owners of vehicles with defective Takata airbags to seek repairs immediately. If you drive a Ford Ranger or Mazda B series truck from 2006, your vehicle is under a do not drive warning due to the airbags. The Department of Transportation says it's deeply concerned that those cars are not being returned for repairs quickly enough. Chemicals used to inflate the airbags can wear down in some conditions, causing them to explode. At least 22 deaths and more than 180 injuries have been linked to the defect. I'm Shelley Adler. Retired Marine Lieutenant Colonel Oliver North, currently a Fox News commentator, has been named as the new president of the National Rifle Association. NRA CEO Wayne LaPierre calls him, quote, a legendary warrior for American freedom, a gifted communicator and skilled leader. LaPierre remains as vice president and chief executive. More details at SRNnews.com. I'm Keith Peters in Washington. Hey, it's Steve Harvey here for the Illinois Broadcasters Association. And in a recent survey, the Illinois Emergency Management Agency was asked to name the top five items that every Illinois family needs to have in their home's emergency disaster kit. Check out these answers. Water. Can't live without it. Number two. Non-perishable food. Well, after all, a man got to eat, right? Number three. Weather radio, and make sure you got fresh batteries, too. Number four, flashlight. Even more reason to have fresh batteries on hand. Number five, 
first aid kit. Look, there's no reason to feud over what items to put in your family's emergency disaster kit. Get the answers and more at ready.illinois.gov. That's ready.illinois.gov. Sponsored by the Illinois Emergency Management Agency, aired in cooperation with the Illinois Broadcasters Association and this station. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Monday, May 7th, 2018. Silver is trading at $16.44 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,312 per ounce. Zen Cash is trading at $38, and the average price of Bitcoin is $9,330. Antiwar.com reports Turkish Foreign Minister Mevlut Kavasaglu is warning that Turkey is prepared to retaliate against the United States if Congress goes through with a plan to halt the sales of U.S. weapons to Turkey. He added that the U.S. needs to let go of this. At present, language temporarily halting arms sales to Turkey is in the newest military spending bill, the National Defense Authorization Act. It would halt all sales until the Pentagon completes a report to Congress on the status of the relationship between the U.S. and Turkey. The relationship is not great between the two NATO members. Turkey has been openly threatening to attack U.S. forces within Syria for backing the Kurdish YPG. The U.S. has also irked that Turkey recently bought a Russian S-400 air defense system, choosing it over more expensive U.S.-made options. It makes sense that Congress would be leery of selling Turkey arms that might soon be used against the U.S. forces in northern Syria. At the same time, Turkey is offering to buy over 100 F-35 jets from Lockheed Martin, and that sort of purchase covers up a lot of concerns. Turkey's foreign minister insists that his country is not under your orders and would not accept the U.S. Congress telling them what they can and can't buy. He did not specify what Turkey's retaliation would be if the ban is to be put in place. Are you an advocate for free market money? Do you promote Bitcoin as an alternative in a fiat-centric world? Then you need Spend a Bit in your arsenal. The search engine for things you can buy with Bitcoin. Spend a Bit aggregates millions of products from thousands of Bitcoin-enabled merchants. Keep your money in the free economy. Visit spendabit.co today. Bitcoin merchants, ask about our merchant suite to reach even more customers. Spendabit.co UPI reports approximately 191 feral horses were found dead in a dried-out stock pond on Navajo Nation land in Arizona last week. Navajo Nation Vice President Jonathan Nez said the horses were looking for water and got stuck in the mud of the stock pond, one of the few water sources for the feral horses in the arid area. He said in a statement, resources at the scene indicate that foul play was not a factor. These horses were not shot or maliciously killed by an individual. These animals were searching for water to stay alive. In the process, they unfortunately burrowed themselves into the mud and could not escape because they were so weak. A photo of the scene shows dozens of horses buried in the mud. Some are lying on their sides, while others are still upright with mud nearly reaching their heads. The president of the Navajo Nation said the incident exemplifies the problem the Navajo Nation faces in an overpopulation of feral horses. For over 40 years, Roberts & Roberts Brokerage has been a trusted source for buying and selling precious metals. Gold, silver, platinum, and palladium, they don't feed the banks. They're Bitcoin preferred and have removed the minimum purchase amount for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts Brokerage today for knowledgeable advice on buying and selling precious metals and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 800-874-9760 or visit online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports President Donald Trump's attorney, Rudy Giuliani, said on Sunday he would not rule out the possibility that payments were made to women other than porn star Stormy Daniels to get them to stay silent about allegations against Trump. Giuliani told ABC's This Week he had no knowledge of whether former Trump attorney Michael Cohen made other payments, but he said, I would think if it was necessary, yes, Cohen made payments for the president or he's conducted business for the president. Giuliani called the $130,000 Cohen paid to Daniels in 2016 a nuisance payment. Daniels alleges she had a sexual encounter with Trump in 2006. Trump has denied the allegations. Cohen, Trump's longtime personal lawyer, faces a criminal investigation in part over the payment to Daniels. Michael Avenatti, a lawyer for Daniels, accused Trump of having an extramarital affair slush fund and told ABC he believed similar payments had been made to other women. Disclosure of additional payments could complicate matters for Trump, who initially denied knowledge that money was paid to Daniels. Giuliani said on Friday that Cohen's payment to Daniels, one month 
months before the November 2016 presidential election, did not violate campaign laws and would have been made even if Trump had not been running. During a Fox News interview earlier in the week, Giuliani did link the payment to the presidential campaign and acknowledged for the first time that Trump had been aware of the payment. This has been FPP Radio News. Online at FPPRadio.com. Today we decided to walk to school. The light counted. 15, 14, 41, I mean 13. We took a left on Carroll Street. Danny's smart, but he gets distracted. I realized he forgot his homework. I hope he doesn't have another bad day at school. When you can see learning and attention issues from their side, you can be on their side. That's why there's understood.org, a free resource for the parents of the one in five kids with learning and attention issues. Go from misunderstanding to understood.org. Brought to you by Understood and the Ad Council. They were outnumbered. Ready. Out-equipped. Aim. They had no chance of winning. Fire. But they had one huge advantage. General George Washington. George. The fate of unborn millions will now depend, under God, on the courage and conduct of this army. We have to resolve to conquer or die. Just as the leadership of one man helped form a nation, today leadership can transform the world. Leadership is in you. Now pass it on from PassItOn.com. Over 460 million people around the world have disabling hearing loss. Starkey Hearing Foundation provides hearing aids and hearing-related health care to millions of patients in over 100 countries but they need your support to continue helping those in need. Give the gift of hearing by donating to the Listen In Campaign. Go to listenincampaign.org to donate today. That's L-I-S-T-E-N-I-N-C-A-M-P-A-I-G-N dot O-R-G. California coffee warnings will go forward. I'm Jackie Quinn with an AP News Minute. A Los Angeles judge has issued a final ruling that requires coffee companies like Starbucks to post cancer warning labels in the state. This is a final decision after the judge determined that coffee retailers didn't prove that there are more benefits to drinking coffee than risk from exposure to acrylamide and other chemicals. Tough allegations of violent behavior against New York Attorney General Eric Schneiderman. Our Mike Grasse reports two women have gone public. Michelle Manning Barish and Tanya Selvaratnam both say Schneiderman repeatedly hit them often after drinking. Both say Schneiderman threatened to kill them if they broke up with him. A spokesman for Schneiderman says he never made any threats. And says the rest was consensual. In Hawaii, residents near the Kilauea volcano are wondering when they will be allowed back home. Officials in Utah say that dinosaur tracks have been dislodged by vandals. I'm Jackie Quinn. It's 141 Mountain Time in Roswell, New Mexico, and you're listening to Night Call. From New York City, I'm Emily Yoshida. And from Los Angeles, I'm Tess Lynch. And Molly Lambert. And this is Night Call, a weekly podcast to keep you company during those strange days and lonely nights. Some of you may know us from our previous podcast that we did at Grantland, RIP. Listen to Night Call every Monday on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your favorite shows. From CBC News, the world this hour, I'm Karen Howerlock. We begin in Ottawa, where the new commissioner of the RCMP appeared before a parliamentary committee today. Brenda Lucky took questions from MPs for about an hour, but one from a Liberal MP is getting a lot of attention. Tom Perry reports. It's the opportunity to lead my organization to a bright and new future. This was Brenda Lucky's introduction to Ottawa, the RCMP's new commissioner laying out her goals at the top of the list, tackling harassment in the ranks. I cannot and I will not accept this kind of behavior. Liberal MP Michel Picard was first to question Lucky and on harassment and bullying, he asked this. Allow me to say that that way, how will a lady will tell the guys how to behave? We do it all the time. (laughs) The new commissioner laughed off the MP's attempt at humor, but later was more serious. You know, when people refer to me as the first female commissioner, it just tells me that we still have work to do. Hours later, Michel Picard took to Twitter to apologize for his question, saying all women in the RCMP should command respect. Tom Perry, CBC News, Ottawa. An update now on the flooding in New Brunswick. Officials say water levels along the St. John River in the northern part of the province are receding, but south in the St. John area, levels could peak tonight. And there is another warning. It's from Jennifer Russell, the province's chief medical officer. 
If you are on a well of water and you're affected by this flood, you should not be drinking the water. You should be not be using the water. And in fact, up until the time that the flood waters recede, uh, about 10 days after the fact, you should actually have your water tested. Officials say water levels will remain high for several more days. Well, flooding from a quickly melting snowpack is also causing problems in the southern interior of BC. This man lives near Merritt, northwest of Vancouver. Here's the backyard. It's a bit of a river, but it's, uh, there's really not too much you can do. You have to let the water go, eh? The water has damaged homes and washed out roads. Dozens of properties are under evacuation orders. Canada's immigration minister says he will soon travel to Nigeria. Ahmed Hussein wants to try to discourage asylum seekers from trying to cross into Canada illegally from the U.S., many at the Quebec border. Justin Hayward reports. Canada's immigration minister, Ahmed Hussein, says this year's surge of refugee claimants crossing into Canada from the U.S. on a rural road in southern Quebec is different from last year's. Last summer, thousands of mostly Haitian claimants crossed where there's no official border post. This year, there's a surge of Nigerians who've entered the U.S. legally only to head north to the border. Hussein says the federal government is working with the U.S. to try to put a halt to that. We've been sharing uh, information with the United States to prevent the abuse of the U.S. visa system for the sole purpose of claiming asylum in Canada. Hussein says it's working and fewer U.S. visas are being granted to Nigerians. Hussein will take that message in person when he travels to Nigeria at the end of the month. Justin Hayward, CBC News, Montreal. The leader of Alberta's United Conservative Party says he will repeal carbon pricing if his party wins the next provincial election. Jason Kenney was speaking today in Ottawa. Our first bill will be the Carbon Tax Repeal Act. If Justin Trudeau then tries to impose his uh, federal carbon tax on us, we will join the Saskatchewan uh, court reference uh, in challenging the federal carbon tax. We believe that it is an unconstitutional intrusion on provincial jurisdiction. Kenny is also calling for a referendum before Alberta's ruling NDP government can raise the carbon tax. And finally, the first test of a new alert system for mobile devices failed in the entire province of Quebec today. The alarm sound was supposed to go off this morning on cell phones across the province, but the CRTC says there was a glitch, and there was a glitch in Ontario where the alarm test sound was sporadic. And that is your world this hour. You can also listen to us live on your mobile device using the CBC Radio app. For CBC News, I'm Karen Howerluck. This is Betty White. I know you don't need one more thing to worry about, but listen. High blood pressure can cause kidney damage, blindness, heart attack, stroke. And you can have high blood pressure even if you feel all right. One in seven adults has it, but it's easy to get your blood pressure checked, and you can treat it if it is too high. So don't worry about it. Don't ignore it. Just see your doctor and check it out. For your free booklet, visit the Will Rogers Institute at wrinstitute.org and find us on Facebook and Twitter. Early to bed, early to rise, makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise. And all was Benjamin Franklin wise. So you actually think electricity can pass through metal? Ha! Ben Franklin, go fly a kite! Excellent idea. Where where are my keys? Besides the bifocals, Ben invented the Franklin stone. The odometer! Whoa! Oh! And the lightning rod! (laughs) Ingenuity! Pass it on! From the Foundation for a Better Life at values.com! Your NBC Sports Radio update starts now. Staying alive, I am Keith Urizari. Game four, Sixers and Celtics. Don Philly wins 103 to 92. Boston still leads 3 1. Game five will be Wednesday uh, back in Boston. As for some of the scoring leaders, Dario Saric had 25 points and eight rebounds. TJ McConnell, a career high in points in any NBA game. He had 19. Ben Simmons chipped in 19 points, 13 rebounds. Sixers. Only 7 of 26 on three-pointers. On the Boston side of things, Jason Tatum, another 20 points. But the rest of the team uh, struggled, shooting just 41%. Raptors-Cavs underway. Elsewhere in the NBA, Pistons have parted ways with their head coach and president of basketball operations. He was doing both of those. Stan Van Gundy after four years. And the Knicks officially hired David Fisdale. will introduce him as their head coach tomorrow. 
On the ice, Capitals, Penguins, Predators, and the Jets. Over to the NFL. For the first time since he signed his massive contract extension, pays him $30 million per year. Falcons quarterback Matt Ryan spoke. Be able to, to have the focus on football when we got to training camp, for sure. I'm happy with the timing of it. I think the organization's very happy with the timing of it. And certainly, you know, when we get back to training camp, it's 100% about football. And even, you know, this morning is 100% about football. So I always felt confident that it was going to get done in a smooth way and, you know, in a timely manner. And uh, I feel like it did. Former Bronco running back C.J. Anderson has a new home, signed a one-year deal with the Panthers. The Niners release Zane Beadle. Saints cut ties with Kobe Fleener. Giants have put their pitcher, uh, Johnny Cueto, on the deal. Expected to miss six weeks with right elbow sprain. The MRI on Dodgers ace Clayton Kershaw on his left arm. Biceps tendonitis. I'm Keith Irizarry, and this is NBC Sports Radio.